Welcome to this Java break with Basis. Today's topic is outputting your BBX data. My name is Nico Spence. I'm the chairman and CEO of Basis International. And today's topic is really going to focus on how we can transform your BBX data output, whether it be BBJ, Pro5 or Visual Pro5, into a very modern, clean format that our customers have come to expect of our application and how we can do it with very little effort and very little time in terms of redevelopment. Let's have a look at the agenda. We're going to start off by setting the scene, giving some background as to the importance and the role that data output plays in one's modern application. We'll look at form-based output, items such as invoices and statements that either used to come on pre-printed stationery or have used third-party tools to modernize and make them acceptable for our demanding customers. We'll have a look at a demonstration of some old and new formats and then we'll talk about the underlying technology. How did we do that? And then we'll move on to the very much more common columnar output type reports, inventory reports, and for example, age analysis. And we'll look specifically at our example today of an AR age analysis. We'll have a demonstration of the old format and then the new. And then we'll look again at the technology. We'll look at some sample source code to show you how we did that. Now the form-based output, we're gonna utilize a third-party report writing tool that has a wonderful price tag. It has no cost to it, iReports. And then for the columnar output, we're going to look at the new Dockout object that was recently released with the latest version of BBJ. And then we'll cover what do we need for iReport and Dockout in terms of licensing and costs. And then finally, we'll take your questions. So let's set the scene. Most computing consists of three basic steps, collecting data, manipulating that data, and then outputting that data. The first of these revolutions to the look and feel of applications was the move from character user interface to a graphical user interface in the area of either collecting data or viewing the resultant data on screen. We'll focus today on the outputting of data. Let's consider the formats that we used to use to output data. Line printers are really infradig. They're beneath us nowadays. Nobody really wants to see output on a line printer. So color and presentation style has become imperative for a modern application. And multiple output formats are a have to have. We need PDF, we need XLS for our Excel file formats, XML, HTML for the web, and comma separated values are still often necessary. Delivery choices are often mandatory. We need to be able to offer faxing, emailing, and perhaps load it up into what's become very popular, and that is to be, be able to put it into a cloud, to be able to share it with our colleagues or with our customers. And then finally, we need to be able to deliver our output into a web browser. And nowadays, those web browsers need to be accessible from our mobile devices, be they smartphones or be they tablet type devices. Rolling your own data output is often a must for our power users. And in order to do so, we need SQL access to that data for most of our modern report writing tools. Archiving of data is mandatory. By law, we have to keep our invoices, keep various records for a certain number of years, our tax records, etc., and the invoices that back up those tax records. So wouldn't it be good if our reporting could automatically archive our output? And green is really the word of the day. We don't want to have to create printed hard copy output and go and store those records in a bulky filing cabinet, which might be difficult to retrieve and difficult to archive. So why not store it in electronic format and store it in a cloud or in some off-site storage space that makes more sense than physical hard copy. So the basis building block solution are the two elements that we're going to cover today. We're looking at form-based output, invoices and statements, and we'll be looking at using iReport and BB Jasper, the basis provided building block tool for viewing iReports and outputting it into various formats. The sample code we're going to use today comes from an older version of the add-on package, a character user interface version. And we'll make this code available to you after today's Java break session. But we'll be running our basis accounts receivable statements through to iReports and BB Jasper. For our columnar output, we are going to utilize the dockout object and we're going to use as our sample a basis age analysis report. Again, one that runs from a character user interface, but that'll now give us a very modern look and feel to our output. 
At this time, I'm going to hand over to Paul to do the introduction and Amir to do the demonstration of iReport in action, giving us a totally new look to our statements. And this is a little more than just a demonstration. We're actually utilizing this code and have recently done it to revamp our own statements here at Basis. So we've gone historically from this sort of old format many, many moons ago to this a lot more elegant laser printed output format utilizing Unform to the brand new version which I think you'll agree looks remarkably better than either of those two previous versions. So let me hand over to Paul. Basis's original reporting approach was similar to most businesses at the time. We purchased pre-printed stationery for our invoicing output. Later, we freed ourselves of the stationery costs by using Unform to create laser printer output and to enable email and faxing of those invoices. Basis's new one-step approach, our current approach, is to use iReport, the open-source, Java-based report writing tool from Jasper Forge. With iReport, Basis has removed its dependency on Unform and significantly improved the value of the output. I'll hand over to Amir now, and he'll show you some of the differences. We're going to go ahead and show you our new customer statements. But first, I'm going to walk through the process of how we got there. First, we're going to go into Accounts Receivable. We're going to go to 12 period in Processing. Now we're going to go to our customer statements. Typically, in the past, you would fill out this form, go fill in all the default details, except for this option here, I'm going to select the Restart option so I can enter a specific number. Enter my specific number. Before I hit Enter here, I'm going to bring up the old Unform-based customer statement. Here you can see we have our traditional unform generated customer statement. Pretty plain, pretty simple. Now let's see what our new report is going to look like. Confirm the information, and here we have it. Now, here is our new customer statement generated with iReport. As you can see, we have a nice, new, bold looking statement. We have graphic logos for our company as well as our customer's company. We have our customer number presented there. We have nice rounded corners. As you can see, we are utilizing the green bar effect for this statement. Let's move on to the next page where, again, we've got a customized logo for our customer. We have their logo presented on their statement. And this is a multi-page statement, three total pages. And then finally, we have our last customer with a single line report. Now let's go back to the first page. In production, this would be something you would typically just email to your customer. Since we're demoing this for you, we're going to show you all the different output options available to you. Now let's look at the available save options. We're going to click the little drop down arrow next to the diskette. We're going to click save. And as you can see right off, we can enter a file name, saving as a PDF. We click the drop down box. Now we see the ability to save as an HTML file, an XML file, a single sheet spreadsheet via Excel or as well as a CSV and as well as a Jasper report. Now we're going to cancel here and we're going to go look at our additional save option as save as a Google Doc. This opens up an interface to Google Docs and gives us the ability to save files up into the Google Docs cloud space. Here I'm going to click on my temp directory, new cus statement, and I want to save that as a PDF. So I go ahead and click Save. Save as a Google Doc. Go back to my temp directory. And you can see that the new CUST statement from today is saved there as a PDF. In addition, you can save out the same form in different formats. Just with the last save dialog, we have the ability to save it as a PDF, an XML, a text file. Uh, and a CSV file. Thanks, Amir. So, what did we use to generate that? We used iReport. And this is the home page of the iReport report designer in jasperforge.org. This is where you can download iReport for your desktop. So, what is it? It's a Java open source NetBeans based tool. It's a WYSIWYG platform independent report designer. It connects to any basis profile or BBJ database via SQL or 
with read record type syntax via our store procedure support. So you can merely call the store procedure with an SQL call statement and that'll invoke your business basic code to access the data in the format that it's been architected. So this is what the screen interface looks like. As you can see, you can embed both data as well as graphical output from the data. And so it's a very comprehensive, modern report writing design tool. And how did we do that? So the first thing we did is we created a store procedure to harvest the data for the iReport. We used the read and the read record logic harvested from the old program that used to generate the statement print. We populated a memory record set with the data and that is what's returned from the SQL call statement. We then designed the statement in iReport using the design tool. And of course, we had several iterations of that design to get the beautiful output that you saw previously. And then within the code, we invoke BB Jasper to view the report in a BBJ window. And that can be called as we did it without from our BBJ code. Or if you had Pro 5 or Visual Pro 5, you could X call that. If you had a user interface requirement on the desktop, you can invoke the XCall server and have a BBJ window appear on your desktop. Or if it's purely server-based, as quite often would be the case for your statement print, there'd be no need for a UI. They would all operate and execute at the server level from your XCall statement. Here are just a few of the benefits of iReport and BB Jasper. You save both time and money while delivering a modern look and feel to your output. You maintain customization control with the ability to add tool buttons such as email and fax and build an interface with Google Docs. Additionally, because iReport is part of the Jasper Forge project, you receive new report design features and function as they are added to the project. It provides you with a modern, sophisticated look and feel that your current reports probably don't have. Real eye candy for your users that is easier and more pleasurable to read. And coming soon in BBJ 12, we've excised all the Java code and replaced it with BBJ code to make BB Jasper pure BBJ, which means that it can now run in a browser. Thanks, Paul. But let's not take our word for it. Let's see it in action. So here's a great example of that same report running in Jasper, but this time it's running in a browser. So the same functionality, paging forward, etc. But with the rewrite to use pure BBJ code, it runs within a browser. The second example of a modern reporting output option is to utilize the dockout object. So let's talk about what that dockout object is. Dockout is really a subsystem component of the Barista Rapid Application Development Tool, but it can be used without the Barista MDI. So you can change all your print at statements to vector assignment and invoke the dockout object. So you're essentially taking advantage of the document output subsystem that ships with Barista without the overhead of the Barista interface. Now, in a previous Java break session, I might have suggested that this was totally trivial insofar as you didn't have to write any code. Of course, you do have to write some code, but it is still pretty trivial, as you'll see when we look at the code after the demonstration. This is what the output looks like when we invoke Docart. So as you can see, we have the columnar type reporting, but we have the ability to select our output types, even fax or email from within this preview window. And we can even adjust the column widths and hide columns if we so wish. So it's perfectly suited for columnar and tabular type reporting. And the benefit you get from Docout is the built-in archiving functionality. You don't have to go and write a single line of code. That's all part of the Docout subsystem. Similarly, the output types are embedded within the Docout object, PDF output, XML, CSV, XLS, and the interface to Google Docs, along with the ability to present raw output, should you still decide to use a third-party tool to manipulate that output. And you have optional print preview where you can do the column adjustment and you can specify the columns that you wish to have shown. You can automate the output and the invocation of Docout via program control so that there's no UI. Or you can have interactive usage where the user has the option to rename and save output files. It also offers you a one-step select and process to a particular output type. And you can open and reprint Docs from the documenting inquiry system, as we will see in our demonstration in a minute. So 
Let me hand over to Paul to set the scene for Amir's demonstration. Over to you, Paul. These are the steps we did internally here at Basis leading up to the adoption of Dockout. We took add-on software version 6 standard output and sent it to a text file. Next, we used the Unform tool, a print stream manipulation tool, to be able to save to a PDF format. Then we wrote custom code to enable saving to Google Docs in the cloud. Our new one-step approach was to use our Dockout object that provides us with the built-in document output functionality that comes with the Dockout subsystem from Barista. This includes all the various file types that we're going to see and the powerful archiving capability. To see the results of the new approach that we've taken, I'll hand it off to Amir for a demonstration. Let's go through the process of showing you an aging report the old way. Counts receivable, aging report, and accept most of the defaults. However, we're going to want a numeric sort sequence, and we're going to enter in our first customer number and our ending customer number. Don't want to update, detail, no. And is this information correct? Yes. Our default printer is PF, which is print to file. So we're going to accept that default. The name of the report, aging report. It's running through our customers. Hit F1. Now we're going to go scroll down to our options and select file, text file or a PDF file. And we're going to say uh, aging report uh, Jan. Now it's asking us if we want to save this in Google Docs. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Type in our password. We want it to go to our slash temp file or directory in Google Docs. And we want this not quiet. After hitting enter, we get our save to Google Docs screen. We're already at our temp directory up in Google Docs. We already have the name of our report saving as a PDF. So now we can click Save. Now that our report has been pushed up to Google Docs, let's go ahead and have a look. Open up Google Docs. Here's our aging report, January.pdf. We can click on that, and we see the report. Now remember, this report was generated using Unforms Convert to PDF. Now let's have a look at that same aging report, but now we're going to utilize the Dockout object. So we're going to go back into Accounts Receivable, into our aging report, accept our defaults. Again, we're going to select numeric sequence. We're going to enter our customer number, our ending number. Say no. Here we have our aging report in a dockout window using the dockout object. We have tool buttons at the top. We can scroll through each page of our report. We also have the ability to save our report. We can save as and save it locally on our machine as a PDF, a CSV, text file, Excel spreadsheet, or XML document. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and save this report as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, we can see that document's process is complete. Okay, now let's go look at that file. Go to our temp directory. Here's the file. Double click. And there it is. We also, again, have the ability to save as a Google Doc. Go ahead and click Save As Google Doc, and click my temp directory, and say Save as a PDF. Within the Dockout object, you have the ability to select output selections. If you click this button right here, you can see those different formats as well as locations you can save these files. So you have the ability to save out a PDF, a CSV, a text document, an Excel spreadsheet, to disk, to email, you can fax them in PDF format or send them to Google Docs. If we go ahead and click Cancel here, you also have the ability to print to the local printer. One of the other benefits of utilizing the Dockout object is the fact that the reports are sent to Barista's document archival system. Let's go have a look. Here we are in Barista. We're going to go to Barista Administration. We're going to go to Document Management. We're going to go to Inquiry. Here you can see the latest document that we just uploaded. Now let's have a look at the archived versions within Barista. First off, we have a Google Docs version that we double click. Brings up that same report in Google Docs. And then we have the archived version of the PDF. Double click again. And it brings up the archived version within Barista.
Well, that certainly is a ton of functionality we get from the Dockout subsystem. But how much effort did we have to put in place to make that happen? How did we do that? Firstly, we needed to set up the environment instead of opening the printer. So here we have set up Dockout. We have a use statement, a couple of declares. We instantiate a new object. We create a new vector. And then of course we pass username and password, firm number, language, the document ID, and the report title as our initial setup. So very straightforward. You'll find the sort of information from the Dockout tutorial or the Dockout object documentation. What's the next step? We need to set up our report columns. Once again, pretty straightforward. You'll see the formatting and again, the details of the various options, the parameters that you'll need to pass. And we have two different report types here. One is detail and the other one is summary. So two different sets of report headings and we've accommodated both types in this example. And again, the documentation will give you details of the format of these columns. Finally, those print statements, those print at statements, we need to modify the code to replace the print at statements with assignment of values to the vector as defined in the tutorial. So let's have a look down here. Here's our previous fp seven dollar equals d then print to the channel, the line feed, the grand total, and then we've printed these variables, f-u-t-r-u-o dollar, zero dollar, the array elements u1, u2, etc. And you'll see those match up very simply to go sub blank line to create a blank line. And then here are the vector values for grand total, etc. And the various string values. Obviously these nulls are for columns that don't have any values. But you'll see very simple types of matching and nothing particularly difficult. So as I said earlier, not a lot of effort required and pretty straightforward to retrofit some existing code replacing your print at statements with populating values in vector. And then we also have uh, the report headings that we would have set early on and then launching the report. In our particular case, we've utilized the ability to populate these values to a namespace and then we're doing an S call of the render document .bbj. And what does render document .bbj look like? Very straightforward. Again, we get the detail that we need from the namespace and then we process the document with an error trap. So very straightforward, very easy to do. And we'd encourage you to look at the tutorials, both to retrofit your code, replacing those print at statements and also the documentation on the doc out. So this is where they are. Here the links are. If you don't pick them up today, you can either search for them under doc out or document output and you should find them from our website. Failing which, go back to our Java break and watch this video. Let me hand you over to Paul to talk a bit more about the benefits that you get from Docout. Here are a few of the many benefits of using the Docout object in your next project. Firstly, Docout saves you time and money. It frees you from third-party dependencies. No unform needed. You maintain your customization control and you will continue to receive new features and functions as they are added. For example, back in 2008, fax and email functions as well as archiving were added. Soon thereafter, we added the POI for Microsoft Office to expand the output type selections. 2011 brought the Google Doc interface for cloud storage, and now we have exposed all of the Docout functionality as an object for BBJ code, which is X callable for both Pro 5 and Visual Pro 5. Thanks, Paul. So we've seen two great examples of basis building blocks in action. The BB Jasper interface to iReports, the open source WYSIWYG iReport report writing tool. And we've also seen the Docout functionality, the subsystem from Barista that we can easily implement with our existing character based or GUI code, both Pro 5, Visual Pro 5 and BBJ code. So the big question should be, what do I need to get started? So firstly, you can download the report writer for free from the jasperforge.org project. Or you could consider purchasing any other commercial report writer that would work equally well through the iReports or the SQL access to the basis data set, such as Crystal Reports or any other business intelligence BI tool. Either will consume, or any of those three would consume a standard edition license. So that's common to any third-party tool and similarly to ODBC. 
It'll consume the license for the duration of the connection based on concurrent usage. And if you have spare licenses, of course, there's no cost. Otherwise, what you would need to do is boost your license with a number of concurrent additional standard edition users that you think you'll require for simultaneous report creation. And that's it. What do you need for Dockout? You need a barista feature line, one per concurrent Dockout user. Again, much like the iReport usage, where it consumes a connection string, here we'll be consuming a barista feature line. Dockout is a component of barista, and there's no additional BBJ or Pro5 user required. And you have some choices with Barista. You can either purchase the Barista license outright, or you can subscribe to an annual fee. And there's some great news. If you aren't already aware of it, we do have a promotion where you can convert existing basis licenses to a current license on an annual subscription, and you can receive the Barista feature line merely for the cost of the annual Barista SAM fee. So contact your account representative to find out about this exciting offer and how you can take advantage of retrofitting your code with Dockout and or with iReport. So let's conclude our session today by looking at this as a great opportunity to revitalize your existing systems, your existing applications. There's some service revenue opportunity that you can go out and offer your customer for very little effort and for very little cost on their part to get some really good modern reporting tools. These are tangible improvements for very little effort, improving your output quality, your output choices, and delivering significant value add to your applications. So go ahead and use these basis building blocks to enhance your application. So in summary today, what have we covered? We've set the scene. We've spoken about outputting of data as a fundamental component to any business application system. We've spoken about two different types, form-based output with invoices and statements. We've demoed the old and the new, and we've spoken about the technology. How did we do it? And then the second one, we spoke about columnar output or tabular type output. And examples thereof were inventory reports or age analysis, and we looked specifically at the age analysis. We demoed the old and the new, and we looked at the technology behind it. We looked at the underlying source code and showed you how we assigned values to the vector rather than implemented the print at statements. And then we covered what our needs were to start utilizing iReport and Dockout tomorrow. So just a reminder, the Basis Advantage magazine is out and available today. You can either get the hard copy or you can view it electronically via a browser, or you can download the PDF and open it up in iBooks, for example. So your favorite PDF viewer on your favorite mobile device gives you access to a lot of the latest Basis technology. Before we take your questions, just a reminder of some upcoming events, the most important of which I think and most relevant to today's session is iReport training. That begins on Thursday, February the 2nd. It's a day-long session. It'll be a web-based training, so no need to travel, just connect up to the internet. Cost price is $395. Discounts are available depending upon your partner level and or your SAM status if you're an end user. And of course, a reminder, there's no cost for preferred partners. Go along and register for the training at www.basis.com forward slash training. And watch your inbox for the next Java Break topic. We will be running another one on February the 8th at 10 a.m. And we look forward to your feedback from today's session. So let's take your questions.